The Festival of Cycling that is Flanders, culminating with the Tour of Flanders itself on Sunday. But first, this, the Dwar d'Or Vlaanderen. A magnificent course, coming as it does after Ghent Bevelgem and the E3, and some great names had turned up to play the game. Well, the Dwar d'Or has found itself really as the last prep for Flanders itself. And in so doing, its smaller distance has made for a mixed field. Fast men come along, the classics men likewise, even some grand tour specialists are in the fray. It doesn't make it any easier, however. With so many options for teams, everyone had a chance. 12 climbs to be tested, eight sections of pave, a looping course just nudging Odenada, working its way back to Varagem itself, the heart of the race. Well, it took 30 kilometres for a breakaway to form itself out front. And indeed, the pinch points along the way, the action points of the climbs and the cobbles, were drawing out several responses. The pace was extraordinarily high, as it has been indeed for much of this season. Splits were happening, the wind was playing its part. In fact, this race had it all, including its own sections of darkness. Teams were taking it on, driving into the gap that the breakaway had posted, never really had a, a huge margin, nudging up to the two minute mark on occasion, but plenty of big names were starting to suffer already. The pace, absolutely relentless. A sequence of sprints between the obstacles, and on a downhill section, this. Disaster for Wout van Aert, Mas Pedersen, Jesper Steuben, Biniam Gamay, just some of the big names who found themselves in a chase group up front. It was carnage. While some new names will also be missing out on Flanders itself, Wout van Aert looked very doubtful. He'd taken to hospital, amongst others. Meanwhile, the group up front, which included Thies Benoot and Matteo Jurgensen, also a Visma Lisa bike, knowing that Wout van Aert had taken a tumble, it meant that the duty of the day transferred to their shoulders. Well, they were part of a chase group, including Alberto Bettiol and Michael Valgren of EF Edgigan East Post in the pink, that were chasing down the original break. Also wanting to come and join the fun, late to the party, you might say, Josh Tarling, time trialist extraordinaire, he bridged over as well. The peloton itself, well, those that had been caught out behind the crash, like Jasper Philipson, Michael Matthews, Jonathan Milan, they wanted to make amends. But would's there enough time with 39 kilometres to go? Well, the constant ebbing and flowing, it seems, of that gap was finally snuffed out as the two front groups came together. The peloton still in arrears by just over a minute and a half. Michael Matthews decided that he might try and bridge. Also invoking the chase, Jonathan Milan, who just was wondering whether this day, which he'd started as absolute favourite, was going to slip from his grasp. Certainly looked that way with 35 kilometres to go, they were holding a margin. So we started to ponder who it would be from that select group up front that would have the day. Milan and Matthews just couldn't do it themselves, and a man who was helping himself, Alberto Betio. Spectacular season for him, could he do it again? Well, he really kicked on when it came to that rise on the cobbles. The problem was, he'd hurt himself. We thought it was a mechanical, but the way he was hanging and shaking his left leg, a strained calf seemed to be his issue. A real shame for Betiol, who from this group surely should have been favourite. Then it was time for Visma Lease Bike to invoke the old one-two. Thies Panut working very hard, Matthew Jorgensen, the American, able to just keep himself tucked in within the group. Stefan Kung decided that it might well be he. Knowing that Josh Tarling was struggling, Kung a great time trialist just like Tarling, he didn't want him for company. And then this, a roll over the top with seven kilometres to go, Matteo Jorgensen attacked. Could they catch him? Did they have the resources to do so? Jorgensen after Paris knows how to get the bit between his teeth. Phenomenal athlete is the American, and given his chance in the absence of Wout van Aert, of course, this surely would be his moment. Well, they still thought about it behind, 
was the heart knocked out of the remainders of that front group. Well, it certainly looked that way as Jorgensen hit the last pave section, suddenly free of all the torture. A smile washed over his face. He realised what was within his grasp. Spectacular riding from Jorgensen yet again. And it was minor places up for grabs. One of those, Jonas Abramsen, been in the break all day, the original incarnation of the breakaway. He set off as well. There was regathering, the folding over. Thijs Benut thought that two from Visma Lies bike on the podium would be a very handsome thing indeed. Jorgensen taking the day out of sight of all of the chasers. A truly magnificent ride. Well, bittersweet perhaps for Visma Lisa bike, especially with the injury to Art van Aert. Others from the breakaway came around the corner. Abramson pushed to the line and just edged Kung at the last. That was our podium. But what a day of heart and broken dreams. This release bike must ponder what had gone on. Fast finishing behind Josh Tarling from the group. Jonathan Milan, who started the day as favourite, was to finish seventh. A cruel sport, but a joyful one as well. Duardo Bladen has a worthy champion, a fabulous podium, and really a preview of what might be to come, in a good way, let's hope, for Flanders itself this coming weekend. What an amazing day.